Hello. Today, we are going to explain the plot of the movie The Last House on the Left, which was released in 2009. Well, let's start with the story. Two policemen are driving while chatting through the darkness of the night on a road surrounded by wilderness and sitting on the passenger seat is a criminal prisoner named Krug. This man claims to need to urinate and ask them to pull over, but of course his request is denied. And just as the train horn sounds, the police car is hit from the side by a pickup truck. Two masked people came out of the pickup, Sadie and Francis. Both turned out to be the prisoner's accomplices who deliberately crashed the police car to free Krug. Sadie was Krug's girlfriend, while Francis was his younger brother. And before they left, Krug and Francis still had time to end the lives of the two policemen who were already dying from the accident and stole their money. Then they drove away without guilt to find lodging. The behavior of these three people contrasted with the family of Mari Collingwood, a 17-year-old swimmer who was training at the moment. And at the side of the pool, Emma, Mari's mother, waited while monitoring the stopwatch. And after training, Mari and Emma picked up John, the head of the Collingwood family, who was a surgeon at the hospital. The family goes on vacation in a private cabin house in the woods, and when they arrive there, they clean up while checking the condition of the house which previously used by Emma's sister. In another room, Mari finds a necklace given by her late brother, Ben. She also visits the dock behind the cabin and decides to swim in the lake. After swimming, Mari asked her parents for permission to meet her old friend, Paige, at work and go home at night. Emma initially objected, but with a little persuasion she changed her mind, John and Emma allowed Mari to go with their car. Paige worked as a cashier at the general store convenience store. They chatted about planning activities together while occasionally serving customers. Paige invited the acquaintance of a mini-market visitor, a teenage boy named Justin, who had overheard their conversation. He claimed to have marijuana that Paige wanted to try, but Paige had to allow him to buy cigarettes without showing ID. Then Paige agreed and followed Justin to his motel room. Mary wasn't really interested but still went along. She let Paige and Justin enter the motel room that Justin's family rented while she herself waited in the car. And not too long waiting, Mari decided to come to them in the room. And sure enough, in the room, Paige and Justin were smoking marijuana. Suddenly, Emma called Mari's cell phone because she had been anxiously waiting for her call for an hour. Mari also said that she wanted to stay at Paige's house, and reluctantly, Emma let her daughter stay that night. Justin, Paige, and Mary continued to chat and have fun until Justin's family suddenly arrived namely Krug, which is Justin's father, Sadie and Francis, a.k.a. Frank. Justin didn't expect them to return to the motel at all. The night. And an upset Krug told Justin that they couldn't go anywhere because the police were looking for him. He even threw a newspaper with news about last night's events at Justin. And hearing this confession, Mari and Paige realized that they were in danger. The Krug family, not happy with the arrival of two strangers, took this opportunity to play tricks on Mari and Paige. Mari and Paige tried to convince Krug to let them go, promising not to tell anyone, but Krug did not want to take any chances. Paige, who panicked, immediately tried to escape from the motel room, while Mari tried to stay calm. Worried that someone would hear the commotion in the room, Krug told everyone to get into Mari's car, and they drove somewhere. On the way, Mari and Paige are mistreated by Francis and Sadie, and Mari thinks of ways to escape the situation. Luckily, Krug's family is unfamiliar with the surrounding roads, so Mary uses that to lead Krug around the Collingwood cabin. And for a moment, Krug and Sadie trust Marie. In fact, she's just trying to distract them so she can light the cigarette lighter in the car. And when she gets the chance, Mary shoves the lighter into Sadie's head. The atmosphere became chaotic. Krug lost concentration, their car crashed into a tree in the middle of the forest, but no one died in the accident. Paige tried to escape from the car first while the others were surprised, she ran quickly and hid from the pursuit of Sadie and Francis, but was caught. Meanwhile, Mari was silent and did not try to escape. She watched as Paige, who was caught again, was immediately tortured by Krug. Krug even forced his son Justin to choose one of the two girls to have fun with, but Justin refused, and Paige continued to rebel. And because of his anger, Krug hurt Paige for the last time and let her bleed to death. While Mary's fate was no better, she was harassed by Krug, she also tried to ask Justin for help, but he dared not do anything. Despite being traumatized, Mari still tried to escape. With the rest of her strength, she got up to hit Krug and ran towards the lake to swim across the forest. But unfortunately, she was shot in the shoulder. Then Krug, Francis, and Sadie watched Mari floating covered in blood. The atmosphere is getting darker, followed by a rumbling sound indicating a rainstorm is coming. And after making sure Mari is no longer moving, the Krug family rushes to find shelter. 
Finally, they stop at a cabin house near the lake owned by the Collingwood family, but they have no idea that it belongs to Mari's parents. And in a state of soaking wet, Krug said he had an accident. Emma and John were kind enough to let them in. Inside the house, Krug, Justin, Sadie, and Francis were treated to hot drinks. Francis also received treatment for his broken nose from the accident. And soon after, the power suddenly went out. In the dim light, Emma casually asked what they were doing in the middle of the forest. Krug made up a story that he was trying to repeat his father's habits. Emma believed it, even though she was a little suspicious. The worsening weather made the cell phone signal disappear. Emma had difficulty calling for help. And unexpectedly, John offered Krug's family to stay at the guest house. Krug happily accepted his offer. After drinking hot chocolate, Justin wanted to go to the bathroom. And when he came out of the toilet, Justin's face paled when he saw Mari's photo on the fridge. Emma, who saw Justin staring at Mari's photo, said that it was her daughter. He suddenly felt dizzy and almost fainted. Emma thought Justin was not feeling well, so she told him to lie down, but Justin went back to the bathroom. Shortly after, he came out of the bathroom and looked from a distance, and by the fireplace, his father was chatting with Emma and Francis. Then, he decided to put Mari's necklace that he had taken in the forest without Krug's knowledge, and right after that, Krug invited him to the guest house. Emma treated the Krug family like good hosts, while outside, Mari struggled on all fours to get back to the cabin. She finally reached the veranda shortly after the Krug family moved into the guest house, and unable to knock on the door, Mari banged a chair against the wall. John then went to the veranda to check the origin of the sound, and John and Emma were shocked to see their daughter come home weak and injured. John hurriedly brought Mari inside. He performed a rescue procedure as Mari was having trouble breathing and was in pain from the gunshot. He was ready to open Mari's wound to remove the bullet and stop the blood. Meanwhile, Emma grabbed a towel and alcohol in the kitchen. To her surprise, she found Mari's necklace in the glass that Justin had used earlier. This gave her a clue that Mari was a victim of Justin's family. John went back to check Mari's general condition. He was again shocked by the wounds that indicated that his daughter had not only been shot but also raped. After her condition was stable enough, John tried to ask Mari who did it. Emma also told him what she had just found in the kitchen. John started to realize that the Krug family was the culprit. He held his anger but still tried to stay calm. Then he asked Emma to stay strong. Then he made a plan to take Mari to the hospital as soon as possible by boat, considering they had no more cars. But unfortunately, when John was about to prepare the boat, the key was not there. John hurriedly told Emma to find the key while he checked the warehouse. Meanwhile, at the guest house, almost everyone is asleep except Justin. He is planning something and picks up the gun on Krug's nightstand. While Emma was looking for the keys in the kitchen, Francis suddenly came in. He claimed to have woken up because of the lights and had difficulty sleeping again. So he went to the kitchen to find a drink. Emma pretended to be calm and distracted Francis by offering him a drink of wine. Francis thought Emma was teasing him and accepted the offer. She then told Francis to wait in front of the fireplace. How surprised Francis was to see Mari lying on the table in front of the fireplace, Emma immediately hit him on the head with a wine bottle. Francis staggered but remained conscious. He returned Emma's attack, but John had returned from the barn. He immediately hit Francis, who now shouted for Krug and Sadie from the kitchen window. But it was a futile attempt, so Emma and John worked together to take Francis's life with kitchen utensils. Next, they sneaked into the quiet guest house. At that time, Krug and Sadie were asleep. There was only Justin sitting quietly in their room holding a gun. John thought Justin was going to shoot him, but Justin just handed the gun to John, and Sadie suddenly woke up and reflexively dodged John's shot, but failed. She was shot in the shoulder, while Krug escaped out the window into the main cabin. John and Emma don't immediately go after Krug, but take care of Sadie first. Sadie is killed by Emma. Now John runs to the main cabin and chases Krug. Inside, Krug didn't see anyone. Because Mary had been brought to safety, Krug only saw a cloth full of blood and Francis's corpse. He finally knew that the cabin belonged to Mari's family, and they wanted revenge. But still he didn't know that Mari survived. He only thought that Justin told John and Emma his secret. Krug tried to find a way out of the window on the second floor while continuing to babble. But he was stopped by seeing Emma running in the rain towards the dock. He suddenly knew John's plan to escape by boat. Not long after, John entered the room and saw the window overlooking the dock open. John thought Krug had managed to chase Emma there and tried to yell to warn Emma. But as it turned out, Krug was still in the room but hiding behind the door. John, caught off guard, was unprepared to parry Krug's blows, and a fierce fight ensued, where John tried to counter Krug's attacks, but his strength was weakened. John finally collapsed in front of the fireplace, where he finally saw the key to the ship. John stood up and fought as hard as he could, but Krug was stronger. He almost lost his life when Justin came to his aid and pointed a gun at Krug from behind. Krug didn't expect that his son would dare to fight him. 
He took the offensive and pushed Justin with an iron until he was injured. Luckily, Emma arrived soon, Krug fainted after being hit by Emma and John alternately, and the Collingwood family then took Mari and Justin to the hospital by boat. The next day, Krug started to wake up, but his body was paralyzed. Apparently, John had drugged him so that he could not move from the neck down. Because he could not move, Krug could only scream in panic, not knowing what John would do to him next. Moreover, after seeing John take him to the open oven door, John only told Krug to calm down when he put Krug's head in the oven, and Krug's life was instantly lost. 